the last two years, the PCSK9 inhibitor prize have been much in the news. Although there is no right way to reach a conclusion whether we are paying the right prize, many among us will concur that like everything in life that is related to financial decisions, you need to consider incremental costs. A quality adjusted life year is a mechanism of looking at both mortality and morbidity simultaneously. So conceptually, I think it's a very powerful tool. It thinks of health in a very two-dimensional way, as I say, morbidity and mortality, uh, but in a way that allows us to compare the value for money across disease areas. Now, as someone who sees patients and also engaged with population health management, my focus and emphasis is rather than talking about prices, we need to talk about value. And I know there is a lot of emphasis on coming up with numbers like incremental cost effective ratio for the quality adjusted life year you mentioned. And it should be around 50 to $150,000. Those are the terms that our cardiologists and also management cares are having those conversations. How do we get there? Well, with PCSK9s, if you think about the MACE outcome that is part of both of the outcomes trials, there is a, both a mortality element to that MACE outcome, fatal events, and there is the, uh, a non-fatal event outcome. And the quality outcome itself can capture both of those. And it's the assumptions that we make based on the cardiovascular outcomes trials around the treatment effects on those two different components that drive the quality adjusted life years. I think from the health systems perspective, what we've seen with these price reductions is that we've brought PCSK9s into the realm of being potentially cost effective for some patients. They're still not going to be cost effective for every single patient and, and, and possibly not every single patient recruited to the Fourier or Odyssey trials. But nevertheless, within those trials, if we focus on the high risk patients, it's going, it will be clear that for many of those patients, they will now have value from uh, taking a PCSK9. Just wanted to know, Sergio, you have a great PCSK9 clinic, and how do you feel and what's the best advice for the rest of us? Well, here? I can be very, very brief. We needed to give this good drug to the right patients, and we needed to do it in a way that wouldn't ruin our practice. So we had to put an effort. Uh, as you said, we put personnel like a physician assistant and a clinical pharmacist and a nurse uh, together with a medical assistant to work with a standardized way of adding to the paperwork that the insurance um, gives you with the idea of this is not enough. They give you uh, a questionnaire to fill knowing that that will raise questions. And that's the basis for the back and forth, the denial, the fatigue that they will produce in practices. We adopted a stance like, no, if the patient qualifies, we will get him qualified. So you will be fatigued before us. And